if it was released in theaters. This sounds like a really lazy strategy. <laughs> it's the most lazy, <laughs> dumb way of like producing movies. You gotta love to be gone back yet. Love to tell me, don't you grab it. This video is brought to you by T Blocks. Enjoy the content now, but stay for the shilling later. Welcome, the Lobster Magnet and Friends. I'm here with my buddy, Goro Gregoro. That's me. And we are here yeah. to talk about Gantz Zero. Yep, the CGI movie. So we were like, you know, waiting for Zavul to come watch Devil Man with us. Which reminds me, have you finished watching Devil Man yet or no? Oh, I haven't finished it yet. I thought we were going to watch it together. Well, we we can keep trying doing that. Uh, I mean, I, that'd, be, that'd be fun to keep watching it together um, and eventually do like a three-person review. We're already late as it is to the conversation, so we might as well just like <laughs> keep being late. <laughs> yeah. Although, in order to watch it together, like someone's going to have to... I guess we can watch it in like Rabbit or something. Well, so anyway, um, while we were waiting, you know, we, we found out that the Gantt CGI movie was on uh, Netflix. So we're like, me and Greg were like, we're going to watch this. And then we watched it and we were really pleased. So we have a long history of Gantz. We saw the original anime back when we were in college. Uh, we read the manga. We followed the manga all the way through to its end. We enjoy mm -hmm. Gantz guy stuff. Um, but, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, you know, Gantz has not been represented. There's the shitty live action movies, Goro's seen them, I haven't. The anime has decent moments, but it is definitely hamstrung by a terrible filler ending and stuff that's, like, stretched due to the fact that there wasn't a lot of manga material at the time. Yeah, and even the ending for the manga, like, it did not, uh, it did not, um, you know, do the series justice, in my opinion. I think. Oh, there are things I liked about it. There were it, it, it did get stretched out for a l way too long over time. Um, but you know, um, so then you know, uh, I'd heard about the CGI movie. I'd been meaning to see it for a long time, and uh, you know, uh, I guess I avoided it because, like, you know, CGI and anime so far has been kind of terrible. But I think this is my favorite CGI anime movie I've ever seen. It was it was very good, and that was like a fantastic Gantz arc in the manga too. Yeah, that, that was like and, hands down our favorite, one of our favorite arcs in the entire series. I mean, yeah. uh, as a Gantz purist, I was like kind of saddened to see like you know a lot of obviously a lot of it was cut out. Like uh, they didn't have uh, Muscle Rider, they didn't have the Psychics, they didn't have a lot of the Gantz team members. They just had the Old Man and Reika. And that was about it. And of course, Kato. But th and that was about it. But um, what sort of sold it for me is that like they got all the necessary action beats really, really right. Like yeah. the the gravity hammer gun was amazing. Like I, yes. I love the, I love the special effect they had for that. Um, I loved it when you know the action was wonderful, fluid, wonderfully fluid and kinetic. And I, I loved seeing like Hira Oka, Oka, our favorite ping pong guy, as the yes. champion. <laughs> They, they, they got that right. And even if some of the stuff was toned down, we still got the giant boob daily. And even if we didn't get the sex offender guy. So, so yeah. basically all of the, like the really cool action moments were like all done justice. And you know, th 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 that's all we needed. Kato got his hero moment. Um, all of the action scenes were freaking fantastic. It was probably the best visual representation of like the Gantz shit that we know and love. And, yeah. it, you know, uh, I was surprisingly pleased that we, yeah. we actually got a good Gantz something. Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting to see, like, kind of uh, the different choices they took from the manga, too. And how well, like, those choices worked in this in this film. Like, um, you know, the fact that... Uh, oh, yeah, the samurai, the, 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 the vampires, they took them out as well. But, sorry, go on. The vampires, they took them out, but, like... Um, <laughs> Kato, in the end, he doesn't revive Kurono he, because he doesn't know Kurono in this film. Yeah, originally I was, like, really super pissed off about that, that they, like, just played it like uh, Kato was, um, had never been in Gantz before and he just randomly died. And then they had the little bit of a twist ending that, like, oh, he, yeah. he, he would have kept on fighting to save everyone. I was like, ah, yeah. there you go, for us, us, for the fans. Yeah, and I like that because they were, like, Oh, in, but almost at the same time, it's like it was kind of it was kind of weird that they uh, they were like lying to him like basically the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But, 
I, I mean, that was just like a minor, there was like a minor thing that, um, that was like a little pet peeve, but it wasn't, it wasn't even like that big of a deal, honestly. I, I think this, this, this movie was still beautifully done. Like all the characters were like pretty spot on in terms of their personalities and the voice actings, I think. Um, yeah, uh, it felt like it was a really great, a- accurate representation. And in, I guess you could say, as much as I wanted to see all of our favorite Gantz team members, um, you know, it definitely made the movie much more concise to just focus on Kato. And, you know, we still got, like, the epic moments of, um, you know, the gravity hammer, the sub-lieutenant fights, um, as well as, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the giant boob monster, and Oka's incredible, like, hyper Gantz suit and the Gantz mech, which looked amazing. Yeah, 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 it was great. So, uh, and even like some of the earlier clips of them of uh, Kurno fighting the lightning demon, that was just like a nice little. Oh, that, 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 that was a great flashback. That that yeah. that, that gave me so much like nostalgia. I was like, oh, I remember I want, this. I wanted to see that arc in, in its whole now too. Like, I want to see them make a movie just for that now. That would be kind of nice if we got, like, a Gantz film series of, like, all just, like, the really good arcs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty uh, really pretty neat, I guess. But they probably can't do that that often. Like, and not every arc works could work like that. No, often. that's true. This worked really well as, like, a self-contained thing where, like, if you've never seen Gantz, you could probably, you know, watch this and follow it and get all the important details. Um, yeah. uh, versus someone like us who are like more familiar with it and a little disappointed, but still we're like, you know, there's enough touches, enough good touches that we're like, yeah, you know, this, this is much better. This is better than the anime. This is better than those goddamn live action movies. You know, uh, I approve. Yeah. So it was definitely oh. a nice little surprise. I'd give it an 8.5. I give it a nine. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it was a uh, best Gantz uh, thing. Best Gantz thing that's ever been done. Yeah. Uh, Although, yeah. what, what you call best adaptation from Gantz? Yep. And like, um, what you call it? Um, you know, get your act together. Other CGI anime and anime movies. Why can't you all look as good as this? Yeah, like all the monsters were like really detailed and super well done in CGI and all the animation was really nice. The, the and movement fluid. was nice and fluid. It, it was great. Like, God, there's this movie that was released on Netflix. I was kind of excited for called like Godzilla and the planet of the monsters. And mm-hmm. the, it's a CGI movie. And it basically looks like a fucking PS2 cut, cut scene. And basically the concept <laughs> of the movie is like, I, I was totally down for it. Like mankind leaves earth because Godzilla and monsters are terrorizing. And then they mm-hmm. decided to like go back to earth in like, you know, a couple of years in the future. So basically, uh, you know, they come back to earth and it's like, you know, it's going to be a trilogy. They're going to be like three movies and you know, um, the future humans have to fight Godzilla on Kaiju planet. They have to fight him on Kaiju planet mm-hmm. or, or earth, uh, like 10,000 years in the future because of time dilation. So are there like, other Godzillas on the planet populating the planet now or something? Yeah, well, what they were, the big secret is that they fight one Godzilla and they kill it and they think they, they won the battle, but it turns out that was just like a, a Godzilla offspring and the real Godzilla is like ten times bigger. Oh, God. Well. Uh, you know, it, it's okay. If you really love Godzilla, then, you know, it, it's worth a watch. But, like, you know, there's part of me that, like, the whole time I was looking at it and I was thinking, God damn it, why does this look like a PS2 cutscene? Uh, who was that director who, with the Godzilla that we saw? Oh, Shin Godzilla, recently. Hideki Anno, the creator of Evangelion. Right, Hideki Anno. That that Godzilla was. Uh, oh, that, that really was great, well Godzilla! Done. I freaking love that Godzilla. All Godzilla fans, anyone who knows about Godzilla, go see Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is amazing. Yeah, uh, a really really nice uh, adaptation. I think it's yeah, like great reimagining. <laughs> fresh uh, take on the. On the genre, I think. Uh, well, you know, uh, but, you know, maybe if Godzilla War of the Planets or Planet Godzilla, whatever the hell it's called, was actually had the quality of the Gantz thing, you know, it would be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
whatchamacallit. Uh, but I think that finishes our thoughts on Gantt Zero. This was like, you know, we, we enjoyed it. We, we enjoyed the H-Gun. Not much more to discuss. Go yeah. check it out on Netflix. It's better than the Cloverfield Paradox. I haven't seen that, and I, I haven't seen your video of it uh, <laughs> yet either, so I gotta see that too. Well, I gotta see your video of it first. My, my, my video is very low effort content, but like if you're like playing Hearthstone, you should play it because it's basically just me talking over, and then I have images of like the weird Cloverfield manga that they commissioned in Japan um, while I'm talking about it. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, yeah. J.J. Abrams, like, commissioned this, like, shonen manga, like, called Cloverfield Kishin. And it is the, just the weirdest and dumbest thing ever. Where, like, this little kid, Japanese kid, turns out to, like, um, be able to be controlled, control the Cloverfield monster. Because, um, what is it? Um, he was, like, there's this cult that was, like, doing genetic engineering. And he has this seed planted into him. So he's able to control the Cloverfield monster for some reason. Okay. What what is this? What is? Why does he still want to do this kind of thing with Cloverfield? Like it's I don't been know. so long. My, since my he made the well, the guess movie. is that like um, it, like all these mo- the Cloverfield movies to go on a brief tangent before we end our review. Um, all the Cloverfield movies like are not connected whatsoever. They're like small, low budget scripts that like have like some sort of cool hick, cool uh, hook. Like Clo- Ten Cloverfield Lane is basically like a you know, um, a small scale thriller about two people who are trapped by this crazy guy in a bunker, um, who says he's protecting them, but he's obviously abusive and crazy and dangerous. Um, that, that was a good one, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that that was a good one. And it had nothing to do with Cloverfield, but they were like, basically like, Oh man, we got this movie called the bunker or whatever. Um, how are we going to make money off of this when it's this movie that no one's ever heard of? Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just put the Cloverfield name on it and we'll put a trailer out. Um, you know, like two months before the movie comes out and no one's ever heard of it, and that's how we'll sell it. <laughs> okay. The Cloverfield Paradox is the exact same idea. It was another movie called The God Particle, which is basically kind of like a space adventure movie where, like, people use a Hadron Collider and then they make the Earth disappear. But then they, they, they're like, they shoehorned these Cloverfield elements because they, they knew the movie was kind of mediocre and it wouldn't have done well if it was released in theaters. This sounds like a really lazy strategy. <laughs> it's the most lazy, <laughs> dumb way of like producing movies. It is so. And the Cloverfield paradox sucks. It, it is like, yeah, it is basically. The oh whole my god, cl- we have this amazing idea for a story. Let's let's steal the brand of something else and like slap it on there. So. <laughs> that that is so ex- we can sell it. Like there are literally scenes in Cloverfield where like you you know they have these like scenes on the spaceship that look like you know there's some money in them, and then they have these scenes on Earth and you're like oh wow you just like shot this for like no money just so you could like put it in and make us think that like you know it's part of the Cloverfield movie you know <laughs> it's basically as like. Like, if you ever see Justice League, there are, like, scenes that, like, you know, you watch it and you can see, like, oh, wow, this looks like, um, you know, this looks like this was a reshoot. Like, you know, there's Aquaman and there's the bad green screen and then there's Superman and his mustache looks fake or his, his face uh. looks fake. And then, you know, oh, wow, these are reshoots. There, there, there are scenes in the Cloverfield Paradox that feel like, oh, wow, this is a reshoot. <laughs> this is something you added on. This was not originally supposed to be I haven't even seen Justice League yet, so... <laughs> I'm almost happy about that, but, you know, maybe one day if I'm on a plane again and I'm bored, I'll probably watch Justice League. You, you, there are two things I, I want to do more so than anything else, and I won't be able to do them until I, like, turn this, you know, YouTube thing into, like, a full-time career and make a lot of money. I want to force mm-hmm. Zavul to watch all the new Star Wars, Disney Star Wars movies, and I want to force him to, him to force him to watch all the DCEU movies. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh god, you gotta have to like sit him down in like some kind of like torture chamber. <laughs> like you you're gonna have to like chain him up to a chair, like you know, give him like food and water every now and then, but like he's not gonna wanna sit through all of that. Yeah, I, I know. I I need like so much fun. I wouldn't wanna sit through all of that <laughs> either. I don't think anybody does. Like I mean there's some like some gems in like you know the Star Wars movies and everything, but like the the DC, the DC <laughs> ones, you have to like you have to be like so bored. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget you saw Batman versus Superman, right? 
Yeah, I saw it during like a plane uh, trip to California. Was it as good as it, everyone said it was? What do you mean as good? Because like I, I'm being sarc- I'm being sarcastic. Because <laughs> this like I actually was fine with it up to the Martha point. <laughs> like the Martha was like the the nail in the the fucking like terrible coffin of that movie. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, I I didn't mind Batman like going off the deep end, being I edgy did... murder man. Yeah, even like or, he was or going, Ma- was Max going, Landis, like... Lex Luthor. Max Landis, Lex Luthor, like whatever. It's it was it didn't bother me as much, but like the the fucking Martha like undid everything it undid all of batman's edginess like <laughs> it I, sorry it undid all of batman's character and made him into like an edgy edge lord because of it <laughs> and he's like oh my god your mother is the same mother's name as mine oh my god oh what have been we've been doing with my whole life i'm batman oh i should be protecting people <laughs> It is so dumb. I I, dumb. I I I hate that movie. I, I hate that movie so much. Like, come on, even like Batman murdering people with the bat with the Batmobile. If if they were consistent with it, I think it would have been a much better movie. But then it just like, let's team up now, Superman, because my mothers have the same name. Yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> and then Wonder Woman's there just to like set up. And what about the scene where they what you call Wonder Woman looks at like the, the the teaser trailer package for all the other Justice League movies. Yeah, that, that seemed kind of whatever. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I didn't care that much. And did you see Suicide Squad? I did. Suicide Squad was such garbage. <laughs> Uh, such garbage. I <laughs> one last tangent before we wrap this up because we've gotten so far off topic, but I, I'm enjoying this like rant. Um, <laughs> what you call the, the director who directed Suicide Squad also directed Bright, which I saw and was not a huge fan of. But, oh, you know, obviously, I'm... I was obviously I was kind of rooting for it because I'm a Max Landis fan, even though you know he's got like those a- allegations oh. against him. Max Landis uh, did Bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of his scripts. Well, he kind of distanced himself from it. What what, what allegations is he getting? Oh, you didn't hear about this? Um, no. Before Bright came out, um, whatchamacallit, um, a bunch of people were like, oh, Max Landis uh, sexually abuses women. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. yeah. So, but right now, oh. basically what we're at is... Um, all the accounts are like secondhand. They're like, I hear he abuses women. I heard so many stories about him abusing women, uh, but no one's come oh. up with like a story like you know the Z's and sorry thing. Like, oh, this is what happened where Max Landis touched my ass and said, you know, oh, uh, I'll give you a part in my next movie if you give me a blowjob or something like that. Yeah. So so, so now it's kind of like Max Landis has completely um, gone away from Twitter. He hasn't tweeted anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like this sort of stalemate where, and it's probably the smartest thing you could do. Like, you know, if he tries to defend himself, it'll just like become, make things even worse. Mm-hmm. But at the same time though, it doesn't look good when you're not denying your allegations. But at the same time, like, you know, he, he's in the kind of position where he, he can't win. Those are very like general allegations. So like, it's not like, I, I think it'd be, they would stick more if it was just like, uh, a specific story, right? Yeah, there, there, there really isn't a specific story. Um, it, it's just sort of like, I hear he abuses women, he's a psychopath, you know, oh, uh, I can't wait for the Me Too movement to get him, but no one has been able to, like, come up with a specific story of, like, oh, this is the horrible thing of Max Landis, like, date-raping someone. Or, I mean, or you know, Aziz ansari someone. Well, he's, he's, it's, he's, it's, hard to, it's hard to imagine, like, you know, Max Landis being caught up in all of this stuff, too. But I could see him... I can see him maybe being like, sort of like, you know, uh, women, uh, woman crazy, you know, kind of, he'd chase many women kind of like, uh, yeah, like our, know, like our friend, friend, Richard Bachman, Richard Bachman. But, yeah. Uh, th- th- that's how I, how I honestly think, like, I, obviously I don't know the guy, but just from like following his media persona, it feels like it's the kind of thing where, um, you know, he was like our good buddy Richard Bachman. He'd 
be woman crazy and sort of like pursue them and you know like you treat them you know kind of kind of do sort of like pick up artist artisty kind of things that would yeah. be defined about that um, yeah and, and i could see in the, why that would like rub people the wrong way yeah uh, and, and, you know, that, that, that makes sense to me, but, you know, I don't think he's like, you know, like a Harvey Weinstein level abuser where he's like, you know, hey, uh, uh, g- give me a uh, massage in my hotel room. Yeah. And that's that's just like absolutely. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that, 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 that bit, that'd be like absolutely horrible. Yeah. That, that, that's the absolutely horrible, worst bottom of the barrel, horrible abuser, sexual predator. Um, but you know, that, that, that's the impression I get is that like, he, he's done like stuff that a Richard Bachman thing, which at worst is like pickup artistry and kind of maybe douchey, but like not really crossing any boundaries. Yeah. But you know, like... as I said in my video, you know, the liberal left hates him. They, they, they probably hate it. It's interesting. Cause he had this TV series, Dirk Gently, which he was the showrunner. And, mm. and like, if you wanted to like tear him down, that was the kind of thing you needed to attack. But nobody mm-hmm. ever did because you know it was kind of like an obscure TV show mm-hmm. that no, not many people really pay. I, I enjoyed it. You could go watch it on Netflix, um, especially the second season. The second season was a lot of fun, um, but nobody did. But because you know this movie Bright had his name on it and it was a Netflix movie with Will Smith, everyone kind of like you know attacked him. Why? Wait. Why did um? Why did people attack him for the movie? Yeah, yeah. Because, well, because it, it was getting a lot of promotion, and it had Will Smith in it. And it was also the reason why I even got, went on the stand, and it was directed by David Iyer, the director of Suicide Squad. And why was Max Landis, like, detaching himself from this movie? Because um, it was getting a lot of pushback, because, um, the, the one, there's the scene in, they show in all the trailers where Will Smith, like, um, kills um, a fairy. And then, um, you know, he says, fairy lives don't matter. Oh. Uh, and apparently that, you know, I, I've looked at a draft of the script. It's not in the script. And he said, like, you know, uh, that that was a Will Smith ad lib. Oh, 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 OK. <laughs> and, and there's also like, you know, the, the movie, like, you know, uh, it's not a good movie. I, I was really disappointed about it. And I kind of like when I seen the trailer that I thought. Oh man, I'm not gonna like this. This, this movie isn't gonna work out. But I, I wanted to because it's, it's basically like Lord of the Rings meets Training Day. But uh, another reason why people <laughs> Lord are Lord of the Rings meets Training yeah, Day. Yeah, exactly. That, that's how he even pitches the movie. That like it's a universe where like imagine if our ancient history, medieval history, was like Lord of the Rings, and then everything um, just kind of built up to modern day. Um, hmm. and basically, you know, the whole idea is it's like, um, two cops, one's an orc cop, one's, uh, Will Smith, and they, they have a rough night where they find this magic wand and everyone wants the magic wand, uh, and it's, you know, um, shenanigans ensue. And basically there's some racial stuff where like, you know, orcs are like the black people of the Lord of the Rings universe, which, hmm. you know, putting like orcs in, which, you know, obviously has a lot of loaded imagery considering that orcs are considered to be bestial and savage. Um, Mm -hmm. so, and that like ties into like a lot of like negative old school black stereotypes and Mm -hmm. there are a lot of videos like tearing it apart. It's like, uh, you can almost kind of get away with it. Like district nine has something very similar, but the Mm -hmm. reason why district nine gets away with it is because the alien one, you get to know the aliens a little bit better. And two, mm-hmm. the aliens are so alien, they, they feel, like, far removed um, from... Any from, sort. like, racial politics of, you it, know, exactly. our so, current So, so like, the, like, there's some elements that Max Landis throw in in his original script, like, make orcs feel, like, different than, um, you know, uh, you know poor black people in the hood. Like, mm-hmm. you know, orcish music is, like, you know, uh, basically, like, um, it's, like, heavy metal music. It's mm-hmm. like rage music, you know. That, that you know, there's a scene where like the orc guy's like putting something on his um, radio, and then mm-hmm. uh, Will Smith turns it off and he says, "That is one of the greatest love ballads of all time." <laughs> so, so like, if you lean into that more and you made the orcs like you know heavy metal headbangers with like mohawks and like leather and stuff, that mm-hmm. and, and they, you know you can still have them be the other, but they need to have more signifiers than just like oh they're you know basically black people. Mm. then you could have like made it work like detach itself from like uh getting too uh into like our like like being too similar to like 
uh, our racial politics. Yeah, and, and it also doesn't help that like Will Smith is like a complete jackass to the orc guy. Like he's just an uh. asshole to him. Like the whole fucking movie, and, and yeah. like you know they needed to become friends and and get along with each other. And like like you know if you look at the old script, you can see how like you know oh this could be like uh, you know maybe a, a fun solid movie, you know a fun little piece of genre entertainment. Um, but like David Iyer was in completely sleepwalking Suicide Squad moment. Like there's a moment in like the fucking uh, end of the movie where Will Smith picks up the wand because spoiler alert he he's a bright so he can use the magic wand and he uses it yeah. to defeat the evil elf villain. And it's literally like the the filmmaking is like right out of the scene where Will Smith shoots um you know the enchantress in Suicide Squad. <sighs> It, it, it's obvious that like David Iyer was like you know in sleepwalking mode. He he didn't really give a shit. You know Will Smith got a big payday. You know the movie kind of looks a little cheap, and it's a shame though because like you know uh, there are people who love Shadowrun and would love like a modern day fantasy movie and to see that like arc. But you know the movie did do really well. A sequel was commissioned. Really, um, it yeah. did did well. Wow. Nielsen did like a study to see like how many I people. Thought- were they going to do, like, a Netflix series based off of it or something? No, there's, there's a movie, and there's going to be a sequel to that movie. Um, basically, like, Netflix, um, Nielsen did a, uh, whatchamacallit, a study mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> to, um, like, see how many people actually watch Bright. And in their estimation, it was, like, 78 million people. And mm-hmm. I- I- if you took all those people and they went to go see Bright on an opening weekend, it would have made 90, $98 million. <sighs> It would have okay. been the it would have been the highest opening movie of Will Smith's career if it was in theaters. It was a, but it was a Netflix movie. Yes, it was a Netflix movie. Wow, and and there's a sequel, but Max Landis isn't writing it, so we'll, we'll see what happens with Max Landis in the future. You know, it, I'll tell you this much: it did wonders for that video I made. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, originally it only got like a thousand views. Now it's like up to ten thousand. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But you got like a lot more comments after that too, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So many comments and people are just like, "Oh, it's a sexual abuser." Blah blah blah. Oh boy. Oh, um, man. it's interesting discussion. There, there are defenders. There are people who want to see him like lynched. You know, uh, and good old Ma- Maxi Boy. Although you can see that he's not taking it too seriously. There was like an Instagram video he did where he, they showed him like exercising, and then the person filming it said, "No tweets." No, tw- mm-hmm. and then he said, "No tweets, no tweets, no tweets, no tweets, no tweets." Um, you're gonna delete your Twitter, right? And then he turns to the camera and he's like, "Hey, hey, no, 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 that's my legacy." <laughs> so I think if you're gonna post that, then you're not like too afraid. But you know, like I said, it's like our friend Richard Bachman. Like you know, um, I, I could see him doing yeah. like sort of douchey things and like being girl crazy or whatever. But yeah. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a Me Too denier. denier yeah, I mean, I'd have to look more into it myself now. I'm just hearing about it. So, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll look more into it before I make a solid. A, okay, solid so opinion. we started on Gantz. We went on like a whole <laughs> bunch of podcast-like tangents. Let's wrap this up. Gantz is good. Uh, DCEU is shitty. David Ayer is a lazy director. Um, Suicide Squad is exactly like Bright. I didn't like Bright. I wanted to like Bright, um, but I didn't. And uh, go check out season two of Dirk Gently. I, I, yeah. like, I, I like season two of Dirk Gently. And DCU, uh, the DCU is bad. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. They should feel bad. I'm sorry, DC fanboys. Um, they're going to keep fucking you over. All right, so thank you for hanging out with us. And remember, lobsters and tennis, but don't you grab it. Do you like Lowe's but hate shopping? Then t Blocks is the subscription service for you. But I know what you're thinking. But Lobster, how is that any different than Loot Crate or the other subscription services? Well, t Blocks sends you t-shirts, which is clothing, which is actually useful, unlike the useless swag junk that Loot Crate keeps peddling on gullible schmucks. And this isn't just knockoff brand crap. t Blocks hooks you up with licensed shirts for all the stuff you love, because you need clothes. How else are you going to keep your puny human man flesh protected from the elements? T-shirts are useful for any occasion. Wear them. Give them to friends. Give them to enemies. Knit them together. Make a quilt. T-shirts are life. And you know the best part? It'll only cost you $6.99. That's right, you can get 12 shirts sent to you for once a month for only $6.99. And you know what? If ultra cheap licensed goods are too basic for you, then there's also the Community T Block set, which features original designs from the best up and coming artists so you can keep that hipster street cred. 
but I'm here to save you even more money. Use the code LobsterTBX at checkout and you'll save 10% on any order. Be a t-shirt wearing God amongst mortals. Use the power of the most expensive seafood to get you the cheapest t-shirts now.